All right, here we go. Spectating another match of Territorial I.O. I'm not sure if you guys prefer it zoomed out to be able to see the entire thing or a little bit like this, so it's more like up in there. Probably just won't, we won't see what's going on over here. You know what? I'm going to mix up this time. We're going to like be a little more zoomed in and active looking around or spectating. Got to hide the screen in the bottom right because we don't want um, people spamming emotes in here. Uh, we, we don't like to encourage the stream snipers, so we just kind of like cover up their attention seeking down there. I need, I need, I need you to push me out of here, please. Thank you. If you'd be so kind as to uh, take me out, it'd be great. How are things going around here? Any? Uh, there we go. Take me out of here. There we are. Push me out. Thank you so kindly. So get those numbers on my screen. Beautiful. We are spectating. Spectations. All right, they stopped spamming emotes. There we go. All right, Lake's doing pretty well over here. Nice little expansion early on as well. And they can carve through some bots, although their troops are pretty low. Um, attack me equals send all. Honestly, uh, oh, they're, but they're getting troops back. Oh, this guy's attacking them, though. Yeah, I feel like these guys should all work together to stop. You don't want to be next to somebody this big this early. So all you guys working together to push him down would probably be good for you. Look at this guy boating us away across. They should, like, this guy should be attacking him. They should all, like, if you're next to the crown early, like, in free-for-all, like, you got to work together to take him down or you're done. Because you're just, like, you're just, you'll be next up on the chopping, chopping block. That's what's going to happen. Anything of interest? You stinks doing pretty well down here. They're doing all right. Well, that's not very nice. Um, we're just doing, doing what we can over here. They're doing pretty well. If I'm so bad, why do I have 19,000 subs and you have zero? Riddle me that, Batman. Um, ha get wrecked. Flexing numbers. Whoa, I don't like that guy's name. Zoom out a little bit here. Maybe I will keep more zoomed out. <laughs> um, some of these names are uh, a little offensive there. Maybe keep it zoomed out to not uh, draw too much attention to them, right? Um, all right. So, but unfortunately for uh, these guys around him, they didn't really gang up on him. So, and see what's happening? He's just slowly pushing through one by one everybody around him because they didn't uh, they didn't work together against him. They they sat there being scared and. If you sit next to the leaderboard crown guy being scared, unless somebody like takes the hit for you and goes full aggro on him, um, they'll just, it, they'll just like, slowly, one by one, chop up all the people around him, and you'll be next. Who else is doing well over here? P.O.L., where are you at? Wait. P.O.L. is... Why did it zoom me over there? Because I clicked the wrong one. P.O.L. is doing well down here, right next to you, Stink. Hmm... It's probably tempting for P.O.L. to, since they have like double the troops of U-Stink, to attack them and get a, a fair bit of land. But the problem is, they're so big, like U-Stink is so big on land as well that they could actually, they could really slow them down a lot. It's probably better just to focus on weaker targets. Yeah, it does seem like the winning strategy, if you're next to somebody who's big early, is oftentimes to like, if you can form an alliance, like if you're next to big, somebody big early, and you have like a good option to like, okay, they have a good path to go that way to expand. And I have a good path to go this way to expand. Just to like form an alliance with each other and ignore each other. Another big guy, three big guys right here. Uh, and just like ignore each other and just have a race to see who can carve through the small guys the fastest. Is sometimes a winning strategy. Now it also but it also depends like what your borders are. If you're in a situation where you, you only have like two people to attack, one's the crown and the other's like just a little bit smaller than you. Like, this is, this is for when, like, the whole, like, oh, just race through carving through the little guys. That only works when you and the other guy are significantly larger than everybody else around you. Um, then you can, like, form an alliance and push your way through. Now, if you're all kind of about the same size, eh, then you might want to work together with some of the other guys to take the one big guy. Like, right here, they're getting the situation where, like, they're not that much bigger than the guys around them. It's kind of taking them a while to carve through them, so... They could try to like do the politic thing and try and get like, oh, you guys work on him, and then I'll get him to decide too. Look at like the, the political strategy involved and all that, you know. Um, but yeah, this guy's doing pretty well. This guy leaving is pretty good for Lake, although see, Lake's in a situation. I if I was in Lake, I'd be almost be tempted to boat across right now because this right this guy right here is pretty decent size. This guy's, I mean, maybe not. How many troops does this guy have? One point seven mil. Maybe he's maybe he's doing all right because the problem with boating across is. Well, you make yourself more vulnerable to, you know, if the people around you decide, hey, let's all gang up on the crown, you know, the more people you have borders with, this problem, because he can win this fight against him slowly over time. Same with Byzantium, like, in a 1v1, he takes these guys down. He just needs to be aware of the possibility of getting stabbed in the back. Looks like these guys are trying to boat their way up over here, maybe? I don't know. Let's see what's going on over here. Not much, just like a, 
Mm, okay, that guy, uh, le full standing, um, it's actually pretty huge for these guys, but he's getting stabbed in the back. They're just slowly, uh, they're all, since they're all pretty similar in size, it's probably gonna take a while to consolidate who's gonna be the big one over there, unless somebody, um, like, just, like, leaves or rage quits, but they all seem pretty equal in size, because that's usually the good spot to spawn from, so all the good players tend to spawn there, so usually it's just, like, all the sweaty good players just kind of end up about the same size right there, and just comes down to who gets impatient and leaves, and who gets to benefit from that person leaving, usually. Gondor's coming up out of nowhere over here. Did Gondor, like, boat their way across over here? Interesting. Gondor's doing pretty well over there. They're coming up, uh, strong in size. Lake was slowly working on attack. Nico send all. I think send all actually did full send on them. Mm, yeah, but Lake, Lake is still in this unfortunate situation. They got the crown early, and they're playing well, but unfortunately, they're, like, they're in this, they're in this situation where there's bordering Lots of uh, players that are like almost as big as they are, so they have to like slowly struggle their way through. Looks like Russian Empire is trying to truce with them. If they want to, um, it might be in their best interest to truce with the Russian Empire and work on Byzantium. Because they've got about 4 million troops here. Byzantium's only got about 2 million. And going to, they'll like, they'll get a lot of that value. Even if they eat a full send, they'll eat a lot of that land. So I think Byzantium is Lake's next logical target. No, they actually did choose to boat across. That's an interesting play because you do risk, um... You can, like, it's, it can pay off if they choose to not gang up on you. And you can just carve through weaker targets than, like, say, Arstotska is weaker than Byzantium. But it's also a gamble because, well, maybe they just all decide to gang up on you if they're communicating with, like, pointing the arrows and whatnot. Pole and Eustink are kind of slowing down. Looks like, uh, Gondor was doing well, but it, unfortunately, maybe they ate a full send or some people teamed up on them. Maybe they were using the arrows to communicate, hey, everybody quick, get the crown. Because they had the crown, but all of a sudden, they're just gone while I wasn't looking. Looks like some people's got eliminate, people got eliminated up here. Player 92 is taking the crown now. Doing pretty well for themselves. And they've got a, a nice target down here of Holy Roman Empire to attack next. <laughs> Big, this guy here. This guy only has a 3 million. Also not a terrible target for them. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, Lake did boat across. There we go. Yep, Lake was, went... I'm guessing Lake went to war with them. And Russian Empire was attacking over there. And they're expanding. Gecko. Calling our eyes. Lake's doing pretty well there. Um, I feel like Lake attacking this guy before he builds up troops is not a terrible idea. Just send a million troops this way. Russian Empire seems to want to truce. Just to hopefully they won't attack some with half a million less. Hit them real quick before um they build up troops, maybe. You stink and pole are still uh chilling here. Uh oh, there's an oh if Lake is if Lake is paying attention, that's a great opportunity to get some of Roman Empire. But they're not paying attention at all. They're probably too zoomed in down here. You gotta gotta keep a little more a little more zoomed out. That was just free, 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 free land they missed out on. And now our stats got hippo, hippo, and nuance, nuance got all that. Android user 749 is doing pretty well over here. They've got a lot of troops too, so they can slowly carve the Roman Republic, but this guy's pretty big next to him as well. Oh, this guy, it's always it's it's so lucky when somebody next to you just gets impatience and full sends and you just carve through it for free. He's back in the league because this guy got impatient full send on somebody. Pretty, pretty good match here. Seems like I've seems like got some pretty decent players. This guy just straight up left, so I just free land for these guys. It's great for them. Um, this guy unfortunately got the classic issue of being too close to the wall, and so you have like limited growth options. Um, although the people in the, in the middle aren't doing that much better. Uh, this guy, the Russian Empire actually boated across through to here and it's taking out Nuance and getting a nice little chunk of that. Um, this guy's a little bit low on troops. Nope, he came, they came out. He sent, uh, he sent like a million and a half out, but they came back. Now he's got five million. It's looking pretty good for player 92. Player 92, their next, next logical choice would be probably to attack through here into Germany. Because Germany's only got four million. Granted, if they go to war with Germany here, these guys probably benefit a lot. Oh, the full send. Oh, the full send. That's brutal for player 92. And 749 is attacking him in the back. That's rough. Luckily for them, Blob 53 and Bot 69 completely oblivious to it for a very long time. So even with the full send and getting attacked in the back, they still got a decent bit of value from that. And that extra bit of land is going to help them fight. Oh, but this person behind them just uh, quit or full sent and gave 749 all that land for free. Unlucky for player 92. That was so... I feel like skill, like... Every single match, like, now that the community has gotten really good, and most players are, like, most of the good players are e pretty equal in skill, it just comes down to who gets lucky. Like, did you get lucky and have players just, like, give up next to you? You know, and that's, like, a huge factor in who wins. Like, are you patient enough to wait through the whole match and hope people next to you just quit? All right, um... It's looking great for Origins. Got a drink of water there. 
How long have I been playing? A couple months. And in those couple months, I played hundreds of hours. That was huge, though. That person just leaving. Huge little server lag there. Huge for Player92. Huge value for Player92 right there. This guy's also getting... Oh, this guy full sent to him and left. That's pretty good for Lake. That's a nice little lucky break there for Lake. This guy's going to get weakened up by from behind by Hit Pile, so maybe Lake will get in on that. Lake's looking pretty low on troops. Lake's kind of like falling down to size there. Player92 is uh, remembering what this guy did attack him in the back, so he's kind of like pushing back a little bit. Hit Pile's got a lot of troops. Even if Lake pushes through... Oh, he, this guy's full sent on Lake. Unlucky for him. Uh, Hit Pile's probably going to... Honestly, they got the crown. They got 12 million troops. Hitting Lake is not a bad idea right now. Because they've got, of the people around them, they got a fair bit of land and not that many troops. You think it's not also, also not a terrible choice. Who's got more land? Lake does by a, a decent amount, so... Hit pile hitting Lake's not a bad idea. Also, just saving up troops, not a bad idea. Russian Empire's getting pushed around. See, that's the problem of uh, putting your uh, little bit of boat out there is because... The reason he got hit by these guys, because he had that boat out there, and now he's kind of weak down. So he's going for Ustink. Player 9-2 is slowly carving through 749. Hip Hop's in a situation where they're bordered by one, two, three, four people, and they have the crown, so they're probably going to be a target. Uh, Gek over here is trying to push through the Russian Empire. Lake could get in on that, but they got their own problems with Hip Hop. I think Lake's just screwed at this point. At this point, I would call it a race between Player 92 and Hip Hop. I love that name, by the way. It's funny. Um for who's going to win this. Because player 92 is just going to slowly push through Android user 749. Even if they full send to them, it won't be too devastating. And once, yep, there's the full send, but there's, they didn't have that many troops left. As long as they react quickly, they'll get a nice big chunk of that. And then they'll probably... That's a lot of land for 787. But they'll probably slowly carve through 787 next, I think would be their next best play. Hippow should work through Lake, and then maybe th up this. Like, at this point, cons you, what you want to do is you want to get big and avoid being in the middle of the board. You don't want to be big in the middle of... It'll, it's, it's probably come down to like three big players, and you want to be the one in the middle. The one in the middle is just kind of screwed. So player 92, instead of going this way... Ah, see, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I guess you could also focus trying to be like a top of the board versus the bottom board. That, was, that person leaving is huge for hip pal. I guess it's faster for 92 to carve through 69 than 787. But the problem is, like, y you kind of want to like... Kind of like consolidate... I feel like that consolidating the left versus the right is better than the top versus the bottom. Maybe I'm wrong there in this map. Maybe top versus bottom works well because the way the water split. But like seeing you attacking bot 69, um, in this case, just makes it easy for Hip Pow to also get nice big value on that. You're racing him for land. Now, I guess 787, not much better in this case. But before the borders were there, you know, you could have. Mm, it's hard to say. Like, again, then again, like if he, if he fights 787, it'd be a long, drawn out fight because they're similar in size. Whereas, I mean, maybe he's making the right call going for this guy, even though. Hip House touching borders with him. Hip House saving up troops. I'm wondering if Hip House saving up troops, because he could be car no, he's carving through a lake. Okay, I, was, I wonder if he's saving up to fight this guy, but no, he's just carving through a lake. So we're gonna have this guy here, pretty big, and he's gonna. Be, but he, the problem is he's not. He has nowhere left to grow, and he's smaller than these guys, so it's kind of like GG for him unless somebody full sends and whatnot. I'm surprised Hip House is not like, trying to get on this. I guess he's letting that guy do most of the work. There he goes. 77 is trying to carve through Hip House there, I guess a little bit. Um, hmm. I wonder if 92 and 787 have, like, formed an alliance, and they're going to work together against the Crown. Might be their winning play here. Hip is slowly carving through there, trying to keep his troop count nice and high. And just, oh, Russian Empire's getting rolled at this point. And, uh, Gecko, get colonized, whatever it is, however you say that. Not, not the case today. You're going to be, uh, eliminated in short order. Russian Empire full sends on them because they've been warring the whole time, and he's just not pleased with, uh, how things are going there. And they're both out of there. And now here comes the final one. I think uh, Hip Hop uh, is going to have the crown, but not by much. So it's going to come down to your classic three way stalemate, where unless somebody's a really timid player, if we'll see if they're going to gang up on him or not. Let's watch these borders and check these uh, troop numbers. Who's going to attack who? What's going to happen here? It's anyone's game at this point, even though Hip Hop has the crown and more lands, more troop. It's anyone's game because they can just team up against him. Looks like 787. Yep, they're teaming up against him, unfortunately. So as long as they keep teaming up against him, Hip Hop is not going to win. Um, now, they might like once the crown flips over to him, they might change it, you know. But uh, as long as they keep ganging up on him, Hip Hop is not big enough to win this unless they like don't manage the troops properly, which is something that could happen. Maybe this guy like attacks too much. And then uses up his troops and Hippo carves through him. He doesn't realize in time, you know, if he's too zoomed in over here. 
But as long as these guys are... No, the, no the, I guess maybe in theory, in theory, Hippal might actually be able to win the 2v1 if these two guys don't know how to manage the troops properly. If both of them are noobs who don't know how, don't know how to manage troops and, like, attack with too much... No, they're, they see, they're saving up. This guy's... Uh, I'm not sure what his max cap is. It's probably a lot lower than theirs based on the, what I'm looking over here. But yeah, player 92 at the least knows how to, like, he knows how to save up his troops. Um, I feel like he might be sending a few too many troops out of it right there, but it's working out fine for him. Hippel's at 20, 276,000 pixels. They're slowly trying to carve him down. I do feel like these guys might not know how to handle the troops properly. And uh, I feel like Hippo definitely knows how to handle his. So it's kind of like, or maybe they're doing it to... The general strategy is just like save up your save up your troops. They're, they're working on together on. They're trying to get them down. The question is, because like they're almost the same size. I feel like player 92 should be having much more success working on him than he currently is. I feel like he's not taking advantage of red interest. Perhaps sending too many troops against somebody who's bigger than him. We'll see. Hey, uh, Fume. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, I appreciate you becoming a member. Hearts and chat for Fume. Hearts and chat for Fume. Is that an H or an L? It's tiny on my screen, hard to read. Appreciate that, hearts and chat, hearts and chat. Welcome to the members club. How you doing today? Um, he's still chilling about 270,000. I'm really surprised it's stalemating this much when they both appear to be ganging up on this guy, which tells me Hippal's probably managing his troops a lot better than they are. Yeah, he's still chilling around 273,000 troops. Maybe these two are fighting each other a little bit and I'm just not noticing it. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's, my, it seems to be that, uh, my guess, I feel like 7 8, maybe Hip Hop is focusing most of his efforts on 92, while 787 is catch up in size, because I do feel like 77 is kind of like clawing the way back up in there. Hip Hop's trying to vote to end while he still has the crown, because he knows he's getting ganged up on. Yeah, I feel like the reason, uh, yeah, I think what's happening here is he's just focusing on the big guy, which is what you're supposed to do. If you're in Hip Hop's situation where you're getting ganged up on, you want to focus on the big guy. Okay, okay, so they're, they're, they're finally figuring out. They're finally starting to make the difference. Player 92 has the crown. The question here is, does 787 now turn his targets on the other guy at the crown? Or does he just, like, perma-alliance with him, even though the crown has switched hands? What's going to happen here? Um, I'm looking here to see what's happening. Okay, Player 92 is still attacking Hippow. Hippow is still attacking Player 92. And 787 is still attacking Hippow, and Hippow is full sent on Player 92. And Hippo has decided. So basically, when the crown flipped, oh, that's nice. And 787 with the immediate attack, nice. Oh, 787 knows what they're doing. I'm surprised Hippo didn't full send on 787, even though 787 didn't switch over to attack the guy at the crown. Looks like Hippo decided 787 gets to win by full sending on them. If I was Hippo, I'd be mad that they had kept attacking us even after the crown switched targets, but to be fair, that's kind of what people do. And now 787 has, um, more land than 92. A little bit less troops, but not that much. They can catch up. Player 92 needs to hit them for a couple million before they have an advantage. Oh, now the troops are back here. And is 787 knows what to do. And I think 787 was pretty patient down there. And they left because they know it's over. Smash that like button if you like Territorial IO and you want to see more of it on this channel. Let's go.